Jesus. It's a real deal. We've now got quite a nice little assemblage of these things. Everything in life is clear in retrospect. So now I'm an archaeologist, but it took me a long time to get here. But when I think back to being a little kid, I grew up in upstate New York. It was farm country. My first toy was a dirt pile, you know? Um, and then I just sort of lost it a bit in the middle. Um, and then I, I moved to New York. I thought the whole point of getting a college degree was to go get a job where you wore heels and a suit and you know, we're very cold and professional in that way. And so I went to New York and I got that for myself. And by 31, I thought I was going to die of boredom. I'm Lisa, and I am the co-founder and managing director of Dig Ventures. There are a lot of archaeological sites that people think about, you know, all over the world that are like these you know, Stonehenge, Gobekli Tepe, you know, now the, the nest of Rodger. And I think that um, Lindisfarne isn't necessarily known as being an archeological site, but it's more of a moment. Since we've been working here, I've fallen in love with it. There are so many special things about this island. I could go on forever. The people, the seals moaning at you in the morning, you know, the weather, which is so much a part of your life, how the tides affect the psychology of being here. And it's, it's one of those places where if you've been here for two weeks, as we do every year, you wake up and, you know, the day you head back to the mainland, you feel like 200 years will have passed, you know, because time just moves in a different way. I can remember the first day here, where we take the tops off, like, oh God, you've got all these people here. God, I hope there's something in <laughs> <laughs> I get a lot of excitement from the intellectual kind of thinking of big ideas, but still this is very visceral excitement when you're on out on site and you find something cool. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What we've got here is an early medieval gaming piece. Uh, Lindisfarne's seen so little archaeological work compared with a lot of, lot of big early medieval monasteries. There's been bits and pieces, but remarkably none of them had really tried to home in on this really basic question of where is the Anglo-Saxon monastery? What are we going to do? I think that's the, <laughs> that's the question. Um, I can't think of another trench that's quite as visually appealing as that one that we have. And you know, we more typically work in um, contaminated carpet factories in Kidderminster with hazmat suits on and machinery going off around us everywhere. Um, so this is beautiful and amazing ju just from that point of view. My name's Brendan Wilkins, I'm the Projects Director at Dig Ventures. I'm David Petz uh, and I'm good joint director, co-director with Brendan on this project. David Petz, the um, associate professor at Durham who we work with here, he, he snuck up on us a few years ago and he, he came to a couple of our sites, he did some talks. What we didn't know is that he was actually courting us. And then one day he proposed and he said, how would you guys like to work with me? Early medieval specialist, very well known and respected. Um, on Lindisfarne, I've, I've gotten Na National Geographic to to pay for some cheeky geofiz on this amazing site and look, and we saw the geofiz and we freaked out. And I was like, you, you know, yes, you had me at Lindisfarne. I really like community archeology. span When I was a kid, I got experience that way. And that's what kind of made me, one of the things that made me an archeologist. So at the end of the day, we don't do archeology span unless you want to tell people about their past and educate people. And the adventures, yeah, they put the time and effort and it's not just a case of having somebody occasionally tweeting from the edge of a trench. And I think that's, that's kind of at the heart of what they do. That and the archaeology are the two pillars which are kind of 
they work on, and I really like that. Well, you know, when I think back to it, I think I probably have to blame the dog for that whole <laughs> success. Um, unbeknownst to us, uh, putting um, a GoPro camera on our site dog, Fergus, um, just brought the whole world's media attention on, onto us. Everybody loves the idea of a dog with a camera. The next day we had uh, headlines in the local media, dog lead site team at Flag Fen. And uh, by the end of it, believe it or not, he was even interviewed uh, on the Today programme on Radio 4. So what you're saying to me is that dog content is the key <laughs> to the adventures. Absolutely, sight dog. In fact, there was a point where we were playing with the idea whether we should just call it dog ventures. So we added in a junior assistant trainee sight dog, Monty, uh, to our, our team a couple of years ago and things are going well for him. I've just realised I've forgotten to ask you about corona. Can I just quickly ask you about that as well? Okay. Um, I don't have coronavirus. Good. That's good to know. I always quite fancied um, being a farmer and then archaeology seemed like quite a good fit for me. I'm an outdoorsy kind of person and um, just wanted to be outdoors with history. It's that kind of row of stones. Those are kind of a bit like kind of capping stones. Uh, I'm Chris Caswell and I'm the head of fieldwork at Dig Ventures. I thought when it hit, I, I didn't think we'd get out this year. I would have really struggled having not done any fieldwork. Uh, I'm meant to be outside and uh, being trapped indoors was not a lot of fun. I can remember sitting in my lounge in February and watching everything start to go really, really badly. And um, this is our biggest project. There were some days where we had almost 50 people coming to join us on site from all over the world. And the first thing that I thought was, oh man, what does this mean? And we are one of the first community archaeology teams to be operating at this scale since the, since the lockdown. For Brendan and I, like, we really felt we had to get back out into the field and at least try you know, to bring some normalcy to people, to try to get life back on track, to try to make some sense out of this year. Um, and being at Lindisfarne, I think, is the, the perfect place to, to do that with all of us together. It is our biggest dig, it's our funnest dig. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to the next couple of weeks. And, you know, our, our I think what's really important is that, that we try. You know, that, that um, we, we make this as safe as possible, but we try and, 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 and move things forward. This sense that, that we can do stuff, that we can move forward, is, is hugely beneficial um, for, for the un, unspoken side of, of the COVID arrangement, which is the, the psychological impact of being, um, you know, uh, physically distant. Okay, we're physically distant, but we can still be socially um, connected. So, and so just on the glass gaming piece. Um, yeah, we've got to find the rest of the we set. Have, we need the rest of the set. Yeah, so Chris's oh. mum is coming to sort that out. <laughs> and did you bring the bobble hat is what I really want to know. Is the bobble hat? Yeah. I think it's in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey. Our initial job was just to show the presence of Anglo-Saxon activity in the area. And luckily that's something we did in our first season. We, we found Anglo-Saxon coin, we got Anglo-Saxon sculpture, we got Anglo-Saxon carbon 14 dates. So it was great that first year we just kind of met our, our initial basic aim and then we could start getting a bit more kind of ambitious about what we wanted to prove. People who know me know that I am always excited. I can't help it, it's part of who I am. Um, but this project in particular, it's like it's been building for five years here at Lindisfarne and we're at this midpoint and last year we had this insane moment where we found this little glass gaming piece which really brought the early medieval story of this place to life and the reason why that's important is because anybody who comes here wants us to tell the Viking story. It's all about the raid. Can you find me someone with a sword cut in their head? Can you find me burned down stuff? Can you find me evidence of what happened here? But this little gaming piece was the closest we'd gotten because it is, you know, definitely definitive of that North Atlantic culture. I don't really want to say Viking. So for us now, we know we're on it. We are there. We are in the early monastery. We're down on those layers. And so this is the first season where we know exactly where we are and we're going to head straight at it. And I'm literally bursting. I can't wait to see what we're going to find.
Okay, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I can see at the moment. Okay. Uh, it's bound to change, but at the moment, the earliest phase or material that we've got seems to be down around here. It's, it was identified in the edge of this feature. We've then got areas of burning that come down around here, and we seem to have that on the top. Okay. That has been then been filled. So just to clarify. When we first started excavating, we encountered many human remains. Those were radiocarbon dated, just so we could get a feel for what kind of date they were. They came back about 11th century. We have graves and we can see very clearly we've got, you know, skeletons. We don't have the edges of those graves. Of course, it must have been there, but we just can't see them. Um, so it takes a, a high degree of skill um, to, to really pick out what, what's going on there. And that, to some extent, is why we've been going down so gradually over the last um, few seasons. You obviously don't go straight down to the early stuff. You start off quite late. Um, now in our fifth year here, we've started coming across layers which are early 9th. Is there, so in terms of these dates and stuff, mm. is there going to be sections through and removals of stuff or are we just going down across the whole thing? Um, I think to begin with we'll just take it down and see what we've got. Because um, the, the, the potential for graves, presumably. Yeah, so we'll take that down a little bit further. So oh, there's also another grave in there. But a new... Two bags are. Is that a new one? It's quite an old one. Yeah, yeah. last year. Um, it's potentially a very short one as well. Yeah. Mm. It, it could be a, a, a small person. Is that an Anglo-Saxon notebook? That's it. Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. a, I mean, I, there's not... Often... First draft of the inside. <laughs> <got it. laughs> this year we're getting down to some actual contexts that haven't been massively disturbed. We've had a couple of years um, where we've just been looking essentially through disturbed material. But this year, I think we can safely say those, those contexts that we're, we've been seeing the top of for a long time, we're, we're seeing that across the whole site now. I am the Director of Operations at Dig Ventures and I'm Amanda Forkstar. I think as archaeologists we kind of think people will only be interested in discovery and in the, the headline story and in the really cool stuff. But actually people are fascinated by what we're doing. Why are we walking around with small trowels and brushes? And why do we put soil in bags and, and like look excited about it? <laughs> like, what are we doing? After the first year, where we were dealing with a lot of uh, mixed up material, everything we found last year was, was genuine, proper, early medieval stuff. So the thing is to keep an eye out for, particularly coins, because I'll show you them in the next hour or two, they're not big, they're easy to miss, but 8th, 9th century coins are really important. And again, that's helping us tell a story about the role of the monastery in kind of regional and national exchange networks. Christianity is really important in this period. The church helps the kings expand their kingdoms. In a world which is largely illiterate, it's the church which brings the bureaucrats, the administrators, and then the kings in return support the church with lands. The church has links with Rome. It has, it's a way of providing those links with all those other important kingdoms in Western Europe. And it becomes the over, overriding ideology for really the next next kind of seven, eight hundred years, which which in some ways defines what it is to be European. So if we're looking for any coins, they'll be tiny. So if I just give that another sweep. Is it that there? Yes, it's a coin! Wow! Wow! Yeah. Thank you! <laughs> I found a nail this morning, I thought that was a coin! <laughs> wow! Well done, high five Nat! Teamwork! Wow! Teamwork. So we need to get oh, a nail. 
Anglo-Saxon coins were issued by kings, we know when the kings were, so they, we can date them to, I mean, it varies, but yeah, between 10 and 20 years. One of the problems though is they're not all in secure context. Some of the coins are from layers where we're not quite sure how they fit into the sequence at the moment. We need to be a little bit cautious. But the coins themselves are, are early 9th century, early to mid 9th century. That's a real deal. Nice. So that's, we've now got quite a nice little assemblage of these things. Personally, what I really like about the site here is that it is really difficult to excavate and um, very difficult to see any cuts of features. Normally you'd see things popping out and um, it'd be really obvious and this is a big challenge. Um, we try to find edges of things, differences between soil. That's the majority of what we do is telling a difference between a mid greyish brown silty clay and a mid brownish grey clay silts and there's so little between them but that's quite exciting for me and that sounds a bit sad. Chris loves being an archaeologist I've never met anybody who loves being an archaeologist as much and I and, I, and that to me is <laughs> is so endearing. <laughs> Um, he loves being in a trench and he loves digging archaeology. I don't know what's going on because you've got all of this layers of burning into which this big cut has been made. And that's, what, 300 mil deep. And then here, under this, you've probably got a similar depth. So where does it end? I don't know where it goes. It, it's really in him, you know, he really needs to know what happens. <laughs> Why is that wall? <laughs> you want me to say it's like a jigsaw puzzle, don't you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I do like a puzzle. It is like being a detective, really. What I really wanted to do is... Um, that's Raphael's over here. Oh, we could get him to call. I wanted to do, get a call and to drill down just there. Yeah. And that's a bit like cheating, but... I don't think it's cheating. Good. Right, well, let's settle. Where would you put the core in? Here. Now we have a great grip on the archaeology that's in the trench. We've got to focus in on those areas of significance, particularly in the northwest corner. We have probably two structures there. We have a, a building that we observed in the, in the second year, um, but there's also this very odd, um, what looks like an industrial area. So all of these burials that we've been dealing with over the last few years have cut through um, that structure to the point where it's difficult to see the shape of it. And if we can't see the shape of it, then we don't really know what we're dealing with. That's, 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 yeah. Coming all that stones in the cut, isn't it? It's all sitting on the, the, the top, yeah. top of the... And this is one of the good, isn't it? It's so nice to get through this rubbly yeah, layer, isn't it? Yeah, we've been stuck on it for a bit, haven't we? Mm. Most people think that archaeology is about the stuff. You know, what can you get out of this hole? That is the least of what we're doing here. Like, what is this feature? It doesn't sound like anything because it's, you know, you, everyone's conditioned to see gold or some crazy huge structure. For us on this site, there's going to be very little left. But what's incredible about what we found is that it looks to be um, industrial. This I say, circular feature, I want to be able to call that something. I want to be able to say what that is. So often we want really simple stories and life isn't simple and archaeology isn't simple and history isn't simple. There's nothing wrong with, with showing that life is complicated and that's where the fun is and I think that's the key thing for me. If it was really, really easy it would be really boring and it's much more fun when it's complicated and tricky and you have to think about it.